This is Anthony Priscilla, and in trigonometry today, we're going to be solving trigonometric equations, which is sort of like uh, algebraic trigonometry, I guess we could say. In college algebra, we solve, or in any algebra class, we solve equations, solve equations, solve equations. We solve quadratic equations and stuff. Uh, here we're going to be solving trigonometric equations, and the key to them is to use the algebraic techniques that you already know. We're going to solve one right off. This is problem number one. And if you're thinking, well, wait a minute, you didn't tell me anything new before we get started here. And no, I didn't. Okay? There's not a lot of new stuff for me to tell you before we get started. This problem, five cotangent x plus one equals negative four. If you're solving an equation and there's just one trig function in it, treat that trig function as if it's the variable. Go about isolating this cotangent x. How would I isolate that one trig function? That's going to be the key to solving most of these trig equations. Isolate the trig function. So how would I go about getting that x by uh, excuse me, that cotangent x by itself? Okay, I'd subtract 1. In college algebra, I always do this little notation, which even today seem to confuse my some of my college algebra students. And by uh, that, I mean just subtract 1. So we have 5 cotangent x equals, what's that going to be? Uh, negative 5. What else can I do now to try to get that cotangent x by itself? Divide by this 5 right here. So we have cotangent x equals negative 1. At this point, you're ready to look at the unit circle. Once you have the trig function by itself, you're going to look at the unit circle and figure out where does cotangent x equal negative 1. Your answer here is going to be angle measurements, either in terms of degrees or in terms of radians. And it'll tell you usually based on the interval there, 0 to 2 pi. But this notation means, you remember the interval notation, the little square bracket means include the 0. The parentheses on the 2 pi means don't include 2 pi. So if your answer is going to be zero or 360 degrees, only list the zero. Don't list the 360 degrees or the two pi. So we're looking at the unit circle trying to figure out where is cotangent negative one. Hmm, well it's not in quadrant one, is it? So let's see. Okay, it's in quadrants two and four. Would it be at 135 degrees or three pi over four? And 315 degrees, 7 pi over 4. If you go cotangent is cosine over sine. It's the x coordinate over the y coordinate, first number over second. At 3 pi over 4, 135 degrees, you get a negative 1. And the same thing here at 7 pi over 4. So the answers that we would have to type in are 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. Mm -hmm. so 3 pi over 4 comma 7 pi over 4. Yeah, the internet's just gone in this room. It was messed up earlier. It's not going to pull up, so I may as well just close that. Oh. So, primary way of solving a trig equation is going to be if there's just one trig function, get that trig function by itself, then look at the unit circle. Any questions there on number one? Let's see. Now, 
Number two, eight sine x plus 12 equals 16. No. Oh. So this is number two. Eight sine x. Let me write it bigger in case you can't see it. Eight sine x plus 12 equals 16. Hmm. Now this one here, the instructions sort of help you out. It says, solve the equation for solutions over the interval 0 to 2 pi by first solving for the trigonometric function. So it's telling you the, what you're going to do. Get that sine x by itself. So how would I go about solving for sine x? Let's see, maybe subtract 12. So we have 8 sine x equals, is that a 4? And then divide both sides by 8. So we have sine x equals, is that a half? And we're ready now to look at the unit circle. We want to know where is sine equal to a half? Where is sine equal to one half? Let's see. Remember on the unit circle, the second number, that's the sine value. These are in alphabetical order. So did I hit 30 degrees and 150 degrees? So in radians, that would be pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. 30 degrees and 1, so pi over 6, comma, 5 pi over 6. I'll go ahead and write it right here. Pi over 6, comma, 5 pi over 6. Sometimes students say, well, what about this empty set? When would that happen? Well, here's an example of one that the answer is going to be empty set. I'm not sure if you're going to have any like this in the homework. I'm not sure how to. But if you had, instead of ending up with sine x equals 2, if you had had sine x, excuse me, instead of right here, sine x equal a half, if you had had sine x equals 2, on this one, I'm just trying to give you one where you would choose that option about the empty set. Right, sine x equals 2. Can a circle with a radius of 1 centered at the origin, can there be any points of 2? Can you imagine a y value of 2 would be way past that, way off the screen? All the sine values have to be between negative 1 and 1. All the cosine values have to be between negative 1 and 1. So sine x equals 2, that would be one where you'd say empty set. And there's nothing special about sine if it had said cosine x equals 2. It'd still be empty set. Number three, maybe I've room to work it right out here. Can y'all see that or do I need to zoom it more? Oh, I did do this. Okay. Tangent x equal, uh, tangent squared x minus one equals zero. You would say, okay, uh, I guess I'll just move right down here to write it out. You could get the tangent squared x by itself by moving the 1 over. And then to undo that square, what would we have to do? What cancels out, if you will, a square? A square. Say square root. Okay, square root. But what I've written right there, there's something missing. 
because this would just have us a positive one. What's missing from that? There's more than just one number that you can square to get a one. One of the numbers is positive one. What's the other number? Negative one. So plus minus. I was just discussing that today in my trick class. Excuse me, college algebra class. But if something squared equals a number, you go plus or minus square root. So how many answers are we going to get here? Is it going to be four of them? Is that what I heard? Oh, wait. It's going to be all of the over which ones? Which one's going to give us a, all of the pi over the pi over four ones? Sine over cosine at pi over four, that would be a one. At three pi over four, what would it give us? Negative one. At five pi over four, is it positive one? Negative over negative. And at seven pi over four, negative over positive is negative one. So it's all of the over fours. Pi over four, three pi over four, five pi over four, seven pi over four. It's this little This is a major, major topic that appears in calculus classes. Solving trig equations. Okay, it's sort of late in the game for such a major topic to be popping up. Hmm. So what about number four? Mm -hmm. Problem number four. Find all of the solution then the interval 0 to 2 pi and this one let me write it down big tangent x plus square root of 3 times 2 sine x minus square root of 2 equals zero. Well, what's the operation going on between these two sets of parentheses? If I were going to put a add, subtract, multiply, or divide symbol here, it's multiply. If two, thing, two sets of parentheses multiply together to give zero, one of them must be what? Zero. So I'm just going to take each one of these sets of parentheses, set it to zero, and be grateful that there's a zero there. If there was some number other than zero there, oh wow, that would be a very, very difficult problem. Okay? Okay, so let's see. Get the trig function by itself here. What would I do? I guess I could move the square root of 3 over. So I have tangent x equals, is that a negative square root of 3? What about right here? Uh, move the square root of 2 over. Square root of 2 over 2, is that what I heard? I think that's right. And so now we're ready to look at the unit circle. Where on the unit circle is tangent negative square root of 3? And then where on the unit circle is sine square root of 2 over 2? So let's see. I'll do the tangent negative square root of 3. You know what I'm going to do? Let's see. So first tangent negative square root of 3 is sure not in the first quadrant. Sine over cosine, all of that's po those numbers are positive. So in the first quadrant, tangent is positive. 
What about in the second quadrant? Sine over cosine. You know, do those calculations in your head. Which one of those, if you go sine over cosine, it's going to simplify to just a negative square root of 3. 2 pi over 3. 2 pi over 3. Y'all hear that? That's right, isn't it? I'll just, just to verify that. If I went sine over cosine, square root of 3 over 2 over negative 1 half. Remember how we simplify that? Probably the fastest way, just multiply above and below by 2. So we'd have square root of 3 over negative 1. So, yes, 2 pi over 3, that's one of them. And then over here, 5 pi over 3. And then, okay, do y'all see, it's over here, and then again down here in the fourth quadrant at 5 pi over 3, sine over cosine would be negative square root of 3 over 2. It's the same ordered pairs, isn't it? Except the sine, S-I-G-N, signs are reversed. So 2 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. Ooh, I changed my colors. I started off with the black, ended in purple. Now what about the sine x equals square root of 2 over 2? Over here, let's see. Sine would be pi over 2 at pi over 4. Excuse me. Sine would be square root of 2 over 2 at pi over 4. And where else? Um, hmm, where's sine square root of 2 over 2? 3 pi over 4? Any questions there? Number four. Uh, I'll type in two pi over three, comma five pi over three, comma pi over four, comma three pi over four. Hmm. So if you have a equation where it's factored on one side with a zero on the right, it's pretty easy. Just set each one of those factors to zero. Are y'all caught up? Number five. Well, this is, what do you call an equation that has a squared in it? A quadratic equation? On this one, this is a quadratic equation. And to solve quadratic equations, we have two major methods in algebra. We say either factor or use the quadratic formula. Well, on all of these, they better factor, okay? Um, what I'm about to do is just something I notice right off. This is something I always do in algebra. If there's some number I could divide straight through by that would give me smaller numbers, I generally do that. What could I divide straight through by that would give me slightly smaller numbers? A 2? If you don't want to do that, okay. But here's the equation I'm going to be solving. Cosine squared x minus 2 cosine x plus 1 equals zero. And I'm going to do this by factoring. I'm going to make this problem look sort of like number four. Well, by number four, I don't mean I want it with a tangent and a sine accent, okay? But I'm going to do it. It's right up with two sets of parentheses on the left. Hmm, how can I factor? Oh, you know what? I might have room right here. Let's draw two sets of parentheses. And to factor, well, those last spots are pretty easy to fill in. One times one is going to give me a one. Not to say that the 
first spots are going to be hard. What would I need to put in the first spot here and here? I'll do it in a blue color. What I need to put here and here in order to get a cosine squared x. Just would just cosine x and cosine x. Now, what about the sine? What about the plus minus symbols inside here? What would I put? Okay, both minus, minus, minus. We want numbers that multiply together to give a positive one, and we want those middle terms to add together to give a negative. So a little cliche I say over and over. I'll be saying it over and over when I'm in uh, you know, with old age Alzheimer's, eat up in the nursing home. I'll be saying second sign is plus two of the first sign. If the second sign is minus one of each sign. Second sign is plus, two of the first. Now, we could write this as cosine x minus 1 all squared equals 0. But I'm not going to bother doing that. I'm just going to go straight on to the next step, which would be set each, and I did, I wrote it right here, okay? But you set each one of these sets of parentheses equal to just 0. And notice it's, it's the same thing. I don't need to write it twice. So we're getting something that we're going to be able to isolate that trig function on pretty easily. What do I do now to get the cosine x by itself? Okay, so move that 1 over. Oh, can y'all tell this is an equal sign? So add 1, and we have cosine x. Is that going to be an equals 1? Is it time to look at the unit circle? Where's cosine x going to equal 1? Okay, 0 degrees and 360, or 0 and 2 pi. That's where these instructions come in. That little notation there. Which, which one do I list? Which one does that notation say to include? Yeah. There's those closed interval 0 to 2 pi open. That means include 0, don't include 2 pi. So our answer here is going to be 0. 